everyone welcome back to the channel so today I'm in one of our loading pads uh, where we bring fruit out empties come in here and uh, we stack it up and this is how it, we're working on good gravel ground because it's a lot of traffic we don't want to be working in the mud and that way we can keep these bins clean and stuff so uh, I'm filling in for one of our uh, workers they're out sick today so I'm kind of in charge of this loading pad so what we got going on is we got full bins coming in from the field give you a look at that I then have to level the fruit stack the fruit up for our straddle trailer which this one's for gonna be for my dad's rig the big one so it's gonna be 10 long four high 40 bins one shot and then what we do is we go through and tag the bins and then on the other on the flip side is we have to get these empty bins unnested and lined out over here for our bin trailer so when they drop fulls off they can take empties right back to the field so i'll take you along today and uh show you what we're doing and how we do that so the piece of equipment that gets used in these pads our off-road forklift we have another one of these uh, this is a Selic S80. What that means is it's an 8,000 pound lift. So it can lift 8,000 pounds all the way up um, as high as this will go. So this is our heavier lift. This one's four wheel drive. So it really works good. We use this one in the winter, the winter months and uh, gets around real good. So pretty basic forward and reverse there steering wheel and then we here have up and down this one is our sight or our tilt for leveling and then this one here is our side shift so this is what we call a four tine forklift because there's basically four tines instead of your traditional two tine we can we can uh, pick up four bins or two bins at a time wide this just helps our efficiency and uh, this just helps us so this bin here I already leveled we're gonna throw that one up on the stack hard to do this one hand a damn camera that has a magnetic mount for that, of course. So then we throw it up here on the stack. Side shift it over and down. So it looks like we're still lacking one, two, three, four, five, six seven bins so our bin trailer carries five out from one of the harvesters uh, there's three harvesters they're filling bins about every 30 minutes five bins so that means coming in here we got five fulls coming in every 10 minutes so we'll have this load up in 20 minutes and it'll be ready to go off to the storage so next is our tags we print these all in the beginning of the morning so I'll just set you up here and basically what our tags mean is this is our lot number here so we can track back whether it's in from the field everywhere we can track with this number uh, where the fruit came from um, where it was stored what day it was picked all that so this number is very important one thing with our tags is every year we switch the color of ink so last year we were blue this year we're green we do that so that way we know if we see a blue tag on the bin this year we know okay we know that's a last year's tag uh it's labeled wrong so we tear that tag off to make sure we all have green tags this year next year we'll go to color red and that cycle just continues so the next is the variety here this is a macintosh so this is a linda mac um, the block is O3D. The D stands for, we call it the ditch block. So uh, where they're coming from, 
is just down over there where you see the vans in the background there. So we're a little bit of ways from there, but uh, that's the ditch block. The date, this is the inspector. This is who's overseeing that block, and this is the location. So here you're seeing it's going in controlled atmosphere, room 10, and then it's MCP, which is a treatment we put in the room for when it goes long term. It just helps uh, the ethylene production and uh, from them ripening too much in storage. So let's throw these tags up on the bins so that way when these two trailers come out, we have 10 less bins to tag and we can get it right up there. So we just use a hammer stapler on our bins to put these tags on. And I believe I'm out of staples. So we just pull this like this back. Staples here. Every forklift, every tractor has its own nail bucket. Uh, that way if we have a broken box, we need to uh, repair. That's part of when I'm taking the bins down. I'm checking um, broken boards and whatnot. And uh, I kind of just fill in wherever we need during harvest while keeping the crews going. So, like I said, today we had a driver out sick, so I'm here filling in for him. And once I get caught up here, uh, we got to get some work done on the combine head. And I need to help uh, another guy help haul fruit because we're, we're picking a lot of bins quick. Um, they're coming out quick of the field. So, let's tag now. So now we got all these tagged, they'll be in their location, and that way when they go in the pack house, they know uh, when they're moving the bins, they know uh, what varieties which. Because when they go in the storage, they got all different growers coming in, all different varieties, all different locations of where it goes. So this is a thousand bin room, so we need to get a thousand of these to finish room CA10, and then we'll switch to a different variety. So. I can see a trailer in the background coming in. When he comes in, the first thing we're gonna do is level the fruit. So the reason we level the fruit is because these slats here, if this fruit, see how they're all loose? If the board came down on the piece of apple, it would crush that top apple. Not only would it crush, crush the top apple, is it's sending all that pressure down through the bin and just keeps crushing them all the way through so having a nice level bin is very important but also not having too low of a bin because we have to pay for storage of these bins whether it's half full or full so the most amount of fruit we can put in it the better off it brings that cost per bushel per per uh, unit down much less so let's put our tags back here so we know where they are when the next time and that they don't get lost so in my last video you heard that we haul these empty bins back from our storage and basically these are uh, cubes of 36 bins so six long four high but if you notice here there's a bin inside each nest we call it so let's walk over here and i'll explain to you um how that works so the bins are a perfect dimension so they can actually fit inside of one another they can stack on top but also fit inside each other so we got this bottom bin here and then there's another bin nested right in there and then there's another bin that sits right on top which we call that the hat so i'm gonna bust these bins out and get them lined up single file like this so that way our bin trailer can back right in, clamp them, and go. So let's do.
with Dave's uh, been driving bin trailer for a long time. Uh, he's real good at it. You can see uh, he's got rear steer on that trailer. So if he's got his bins off just a little bit, he just moves his rear steer a little bit rather than repositioning everything. So um, Dave's taught a lot of our other drivers uh, how to drive bin trailer. And uh, there you go. You've seen it from one of the best. So. Those trailers are basically the same concept of our bigger trailers. So you saw the trailers of us moving fruit with our semis down the road, especially like this big load here. They're all the same concept. Um, just those are five bins. That's what feeds our harvesters. So now the step is to level the fruit. So I look right across the bin and if I see any fruit sticking up, I know it's going to get crushed. Like this apple here, it's going to get crushed. So I find pockets of holes in the bin and it may not be in this bin it may be in the bin right next to it but basically I'm real gentle here and then when we look across that bin you can see now it's level so nothing's gonna get crushed we go to the next bin here I see some apples right there so let's level these up and you can find holes in the bin they're picking fast so they do a pretty good job leveling in the field but there's always some touch-up work that needs to get done. Think that's going to do it for today's video i want to thank you for watching hope you got a little bit of an understanding of what goes on in the loading pad but this is a full-time job for someone to keep up with the bin trailers if we run out of empty bins for them that means it stops our harvesters which stops the pickers and then that flow just does not work so being able to efficiently run a loading pad is just as important as the people picking in the field